Hey guys, Karex if here with a double review. This time I'll be doing the RKF Kamen Rider Zero One Shining Assault Hopper and Kamen Rider Vulcan Assault Wolf from Kamen Rider Zero One. These are the first Rider Kicks feeders of Power Up Forms 401 and Vulcan, each of whom includes a set of alternate hands, as well as Vulcan also including a second shot riser. So, let's get started. First off, we'll look at Kamen Rider Zero One Shining Assault Hopper. So, as explained in my last video, Shining Assault Hopper is an enhanced version of Shining Hopper using the Assault Grip. And just for a closer look at it, here is a more proper image of Shining Hopper. Where you can see the suit is now mostly black with a lot of yellow lines. It's a bit minimalistic, but also has a look of a power-up. As you can see, there are some shared elements that are carried over. Mainly being the four points on the chest, which are actually grasshopper legs, as well as the horns. And a lot of the general lines get carried over from Shining Hopper to Shining Salt Hopper. But looking at the figure carefully in detail, we can see that in addition to the yellow parts, we also have all these blue parts that are to show that it's a combination of it and Assault Wolf. You see these cool antenna here. Nice bit of wraparound to the eyes. The big point here is this nice little core in the middle, which is basically the source of the form's power. And again, you've got a nice interspersing of the metallic blue with the yellow. You can see more of the details here on the back. Not to mention, of course, you have the assault grip sticking out of the user one driver here. And the detail here that is actually accurate to the show is that you can see molded on abs, which are perhaps just a subtle cosmetic way of just showing that this is a stronger form. Articulation wise, got ball joint head. Shoulder pads actually do move on their own hinges. That allows you to get a near 90 degrees outward movement. Of course, have the 360 rotation. Bicep swivel. Seal and joint elbows. Wrist swivel. Ab crunch. Hip joints go forward and back, in and out. Thigh swivel. Single joint knees and ball jointed ankles. Now, interestingly, the shoulder pads actually seem to be on kind of a double hinge system to a degree because they don't always line up with the shoulder. Although, I guess that's also partially because this also has a rotation at the ball joint at the shoulder, but it's a lot better hidden thanks to the shoulder pads. Accessory-wise, this includes this alternate pair of hands, which are these kind of relaxed hands with a slight point. So, of course, you just switch those out, like so. You can kind of use these to get the zero one pose, although, again, there isn't much movement of the arms across the chest. But we also get him into some other poses, like a, a simple rider kick. Something like that. Or perhaps a nice kind of battle stance. 
perhaps like that. I'm not the best at posing, but there certainly is a good amount you can do with this figure. Second is Commander Vulcan Assault Wolf. Now, it can definitely be said that there is more of a difference between Shooting Wolf and Assault Wolf than there is between Rising Hopper and Shining Hopper slash Shining Assault Hopper. Right off the bat, we can see that he now has a much more symmetrical design with a more full wolf motif, rather than the kind of half and half body. And see the base this time is now a nice metallic blue color though the undersuit is supposed to have a silver color that probably would have taken up a bit much more budget and might have made the figure cost more but starting from the head and see it's black with a lot of nice dark metallic blue and the very nice eyes to it and see this kind of visor piece over the left eye that gives it a little bit of asymmetry as far as the head goes as well as this extra kind of antenna on the right wolf ear. Coming down to the chest, we can see it has that same reactor that's carried over to Shining Assault Hammer, but this time in red. And there's a lot of metallic blue and black to the armor. Overall, Assault Wolf gives me pretty big vibes of Marvel's War Machine, because he very much has a heavy-duty, arm-to-the-teeth kind of look to him. You can see it has little missile launchers on the shoulders, as well as guns on the forearms. Not to mention, of course, the shot riser with the assault grip. And coming down the leg, we can see a little bit more of that nice black and red, as well as now with two clawed wolf feet instead of the one. And, thanks to this part, these parts being black plastic, we have a little bit of separation between the black and blue even here on the back. Articulation is generally the same, ball joint head, movable shoulders, though these ones have a greater range of movement allowing you to get a larger outwards bend. Of course the ball joint at the shoulder, you see the rotation, bicep full, elbow joint, wrist, ab crunch, hips, knees, and ankles. Accessory wise, again has a pair of alternate hands, these ones being Bits relaxed and splayed open, but at the same time have a kind of a beastly way of curling the fingers. So we can switch out one of those. Then we have the secondary shot riser for handheld use. which is a little bit bigger in scale than the one on the belt. And of course, in order to make it show accurate, we'll remove the one from the belt. And this time you can actually properly see the molded on shot riser belt, which is an improvement from Shooting Wolf. So then you can have him holding it in one hand. And it's got a pretty solid grip. So you can get some shooting poses going. Or perhaps a more relaxed stance like this. 
or a side angle kind of shot like this. Unfortunately, these bits at the shoulder do limit the head movement a little bit. So a lot of times you're probably going to have to use the ab crunch to sort of compensate for that, but that is a product of design rather uh, than of the figure for the most part. And there we go. Overall, another pair of very solid figures. As usual for the Rider Kicks figure line, they have very well done molding and paint as well as good articulation that can get you a wide variety of poses. Unfortunately, like we've been seeing from the other Zero One RKFs, the one big caveat is the lack of weapon accessories. And even though Vulcan comes with an extra shot riser, that's mainly just because it's part of the design. And also Shun Wolf had one. So that was kind of a given. But this definitely would have been the perfect time to include the authorized buster in axe mode for Shank Assault Hopper and gun mode for Assault Wolf. And I do think that this lack of weapons is strange for a specific reason, which is that even though I haven't been collecting them anymore, I have seen images and reviews of the recent Legend Rider RKFs, and I've seen that they do include, they do still include weapon accessories. So I kind of wonder if they're using this as a maybe testing grounds for perhaps a premium bond I said that might include some accessories, or if they're perhaps waiting and planning to include weapons with later releases in line as perhaps an incentive for people to buy these figures for them to go with. It's not something I'm fond of because this is something I've seen Tomashi Nations do with a lot of recent S6 figure arts where they include some other hands but you have to buy some other separate set in order to get weapons for your figures. And I do think that's a shame that definitely holds it back or holds these figures back because I definitely say you can, you know, for modern day writers, you can definitely get better poses with accessories than without them. But these are still very good figures of Shiny Assault Hopper and Assault Wolf. So if you like these forms and you're collecting the RKFs, I can definitely recommend picking them up. Next time, I'll be reviewing the Ryuso Caliber. So, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And if you're new and like to see more, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. And for now, this is KRX50, riding off.